Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Theatre Arendelle Artist Interview. I'm Danielle Della Pena, and I am one of the fourth years in TDS, and I am a part of the Cecil Hotel. Uh, today, for our artist interview, we have not one, but two artists, artists plural, on my top right. We have a the playwright of the Cecil Hotel. He is the co-founder and artistic director of Fujin Theatre Company. Top it all off, he is also an alumni of TDS. Ladies and gentlemen, David G. Awesome. I think David also won a GG. You think? <laughs> you were there. <laughs> And then on the left of our Zoom call today, uh, we have our director, who is not only a director, but she is a playwright actor. Right now, she is the artistic director of Factory Theatre and three-time award winner of the Dora Maver Award for Outstanding Direction, introducing Nina Lee Aquino. For the viewers at home, if you don't know yet, The Cecil Hotel is being presented as an audio drama. And this is the first ever audio drama that Theatre Arendelle will be presenting. What has it been like recording an audio drama in these weird, interesting, unique circumstances? I used to listen to like the like old radio dramas, like The Shadow, um, when, when I was a kid, uh, when they were like replayed on uh, on on radio stations here on like Sunday nights, some of the the podcast companies that uh, that I subscribe to started putting out original content that was in the form of audio drama, kind of taking a, a crack at that uh, that had been something that was very uh, influential um, was uh, was was uh, daunting, and you know I'd never done it before, and I was interested to try. It's funny because. Um... I do. I don't listen to a lot of radio dramas or audio dramas, and the few podcasts that I, I that I was hooked on, like David Yee, was kind of responsible for that. Um, but uh, I purposely, like anything else, um, didn't want to kind of drown myself in that world. As with any play that I'm about to direct, um, you know, I don't. I purposely don't really do a whole ton of too much like research on it because I really want to a like you know this being kind of my first real kind of audio drama under my belt like I I wanted kind of that fresh perspective on it and I it, I didn't want to know the rules that I was breaking I was just gonna do it and you know if it sounded right if it sounded like just to kind of just follow my intuition and learn from that um so um I really enjoyed it um and I, I really thought like, even if this wasn't the pandemic, like I'm happy that we were able to um, go this route because I did learn so much from it. Um, just a whole new take on, on directing and, and like just the value of what, you know, you guys, the students learned from this experience, I think is, it's, it's immeasurable. Like, you know, because this is totally a legit profession. This is what you will be also auditioning for when you come out of school. Yes. Sad as I was to kind of let go of Missing Endangered, like, I feel like um, this was kind of the, the it, it, like the Cecil Hotel doing it this way and learning audio drama was, did not feel like um, a poor replacement. It didn't feel like- we Didn't feel settling. like a compromise. Yeah, it didn't feel like we were settling for like second best, you know? And, um, yeah. you know, like this was the class to do it if there was any class. It, it feels like it was meant to be in the end because like how we transitioned over to this was quite smooth and like drama free. <laughs> Why the Cecil Hotel? I feel like I could keep telling, like I, I the, the research that's gone into uh, writing Missing Endangered and then pivoting to this, I know far too much about the Cecil Hotel. And I feel like I could keep writing about it uh, for several more places. The, the, the pro when Nina and I go into schools to create work, the main uh, yeah, the, the main tenet that we go in with is that nobody will play uh, a character that is outside of their own age range. Um, and that is it's challenging because there's not a lot of scenarios that involve all youth, right? That don't have elders, that don't have authority figures. Hotels uh, offer that because they can be inhabited 
uh, entirely by uh, by youth, and you can, you know, you you will find people who are around the same age uh, as you working there who are uh, weirdly responsible for you. The Alyssa Lamb story is uh, is something that I uh, I think that that just sort of existed in the uh, in the cultural consciousness. Um, but she is, you know, she is Canadian. The hotel I've uh, I, I've spent a fair amount of time in LA, uh, and the Cecil is sort of like dead center to um, the area where I've. Uh, I've hung out a lot, and so it was. It was weirdly familiar to me, like the streets and 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 alleys and uh, and and people and voice. For for the Cecil Hotel, we we're going all the way back to the the beginning of it in when it opened in 1927, and so I've <laughs> I've I've been writing period pieces, like like really short period pieces, and so some of that is like yeah, it's like it's a little prescient, but like. Uh, writing about a a time where you know what happens after this, like you know the entire you know the the history of the not just the building but you know the 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 state and the country and the the world um, and how how history has um, has remembered it and how and what parts uh, history has forgotten. Um, that's all very clear and that's sort of been up to me to either like, you know, highlight or let remain hidden. What would you like to tell our audience members before they have a listen to this spooky or in our case, spooky five part series? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you know, get, get insi- excited, get intrigued. Um, you know, this is kind of one of those really perfect, like when you're tired of looking at your screens for the whole day right? Like this is the perfect, um, it's kind of like picking up a book, right? Like I, I, I sincerely hope like you do get transported, um, to that time and place that we, you know, each episode takes you just, just immerse yourself, like let go, immerse yourself in the world. Like, and the great thing about audio drama is like, you, you can do that. Like, you know, you put a good pair of earphones on, you know, close your eyes and, you know, hopefully, yeah, this kind of just um, engages your your mind and your senses in a very different way, which I really love. It's winter time anyways, right? It's cold outside. If it's crappy weather, well, it's a perfect excuse to kind of just um, sit somewhere quiet and listen to this and hopefully, you know, get, get, get you know, feel all the feels, you know, and if you are going to, you know, watch the Netflix crime true crime whatever series that yes, that is yes. like, i think this is like a perfect you know companion piece to it we're also we're recording this and releasing this uh on like the, the like the the it's like eight year anniversary of yeah. uh, the disappearance that sort of like vaulted the the hotel into infamy i think like the five episodes will take you on an adventure which, yeah. which I, I love. Like, I think that's, we, like, you know, hopefully we, we do our jobs right. You know, we, we really created like a, a, an adventure story for our um, potential audiences. And you'll know between like the Netflix and ours, and we say, we say the Cecil much yeah. better and prettier. The Cecil? Cecil. Cecil. Yeah. What has it been like working with some soon to be professional actors on this adventure of rehearsals? <laughs> Uh, it's been great you guys again you know I mean there are many different scenarios um we could have gone into uh and rightly so it would have been justified with the stress right you know and of course like knowing like we we had taken the whole fall semester to you know um do the work for missing endangered for Mm -hmm. for and then also looking forward to you know, be seeing each other in person and going through the rehearsal. Of course, like, you know, going into the, like learning that that's, you know, canceled and, and pivoting, it, it like could have been a really stressful situation. As our bespoke kind of um, uh, philosophies to be able to kind of give uh, a piece to you guys that you guys have, will feel some ownership over that you guys can claim it and that everybody feels like they were seen and heard in some way shape or form so everybody was just so 
generous of the project and so welcoming. And again, it was it, it was joyous, you know. We only had two um, days to really rehearse with trial recordings and final recordings, yeah. but we got into the groove too, yeah. right? Like everybody kind of knew the drill and everybody just, you know, did the work, did the homework. Um, and it shows everybody did such a phenomenal job again for like doing this for the first time, you know, and I am very visual, you know, for people that know yeah. and follow my work and my work with David, like I'm super, I'm hella visual. Um, but this time it was good to just really focus on, you know, voice and yeah. performance and really allow myself to be super picky, nitpicky and meticulous. My favorite element of, of theater making really has always been music and sound. Like I'm closest to my sound designers and my composers to be able to manipulate that and work with Michelle and Joe very closely on, you know, like, no, there's, there should be a sting over here. I want the music to, and finesse that with them and really jam with them. Like I love it so much. Like, because even in, in directing a, a, a regular in-person play, like, sound and music has always kind of been my strongest um that's the that's the element where I'm super comfortable do um rely heavily on rhythm and cadence as you can see like that really matters to me a yeah lot. I I a lot of us definitely noticed that especially when like I remember specifically when I think it was it was Liam or Kale they were doing a monologue and this one day you just went oh my god we like no, it's, we, not, it's we, not just one day. It is it, that it, is what she does. It's, it's like hotel, hotel, <laughs> hotel. It's fun to hear the musicality of it, but also see the behind the real behind the scenes. If you're like, oh my god, I didn't. I don't even notice that I'm conducting. <laughs> it's only thing, like, and I thought like nobody would see it anyways. But like I do that in person, supposedly. Um, yeah. David says a lot. Um, like even with the table, um, you know, <laughs> I've, I've been caught, but yeah, I, it is, that is the musical theater training yeah. in me. I, yeah. I suppose like I do hear, I do hear a, a, a music underneath um, the words and especially with David's words, it's something like that's so automatic to me. Audio drama really magnified that for me and I love it so much. So I really did enjoy it. Yeah. Oh my um, God, now I'm like, so so cautious about my oh, I, I I recorded it today, actually. I like I, <laughs> I actually today I'm like today I'm gonna really hold my Today you were the worst. Oh my god, I thought I accomplished it. What is your favorite line in this whole play and why? <laughs> <laughs> um like there has to be a serious one or a, like and a funny one. Uh, oh my God, the serious ones are so many, but the one that stands out to me now just because we just did it was, um, um, he's married, isn't he? Of course, the freaking funny one <laughs> has to be the Muley Graves like scenario, oh, all man. of it. The, the line that best sums the play up for me is, uh, is Miss Coyote's uh, men are far, far crueler than gods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's I, another good one. Thank you so, so, so much for your time. The Cecil Hotel audio drama premieres on February 16th and a new chapter opens up uh, every night until February 20th. And afterwards, you will be able to watch the entire, or watch, listen to the entirety of the audio drama um, until early April. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, check out our Facebook for more information, uh, and have a great day. Bye, thank you.